Yep. Yeah, like this is good. Okay. Yeah. Ready? You've got to stay conscious, you've got to stay warm, you've got to stay alive. That's quite challenging to do when you're put into the lower stratosphere. We're not made for those conditions. It's a very alien environment. Three, two, one, see ya. To me, wingsuit base jumping represented the ultimate test of not just your, your motor skills, but also overcoming instinctive fears and self-control. I've always been one for, for testing the limits, you know. I, I'm never happy with you know, there, there being margin there and that I don't know about. I was, it's part of the reason I, I went into experimental science is to, is to be able to learn how to test the limits of the, of the physical world. My grandfather was one of the oldest skydivers in the world. So being raised in that environment, it's kind of raised my level of what was normal. This to me is the ultimate push you know, to do something that has been a dream of mine for a, a long time and to test the kind of technology that we're, we're helping to develop. So we're going to be doing first of all a baseline fitness test to find how fit or unfit I am and then we're going to do uh, the same test but we're going to do it in hypoxic conditions that represent conditions on Mount Kilimanjaro uh, to, to see that decline in performance and kind of predict uh, what my performance might be at, at 45,000 feet. Okay. Alright, so if I can see you to hold that and then I'm going to put the part and something around your head. Okay, now do a big exhale. So the main outputs from this test are VO2, VCO2, as well as the volume of oxygen you're consuming per kilogram of your body mass. Above 40, 45,000 feet, you're, you're talking about uh, less than 11% uh, atmospheric pressure. As far as the human body is concerned, that's pretty much like being in a vacuum. So the only way that you can get enough oxygen into your lungs at that altitude is by breathing pure oxygen which gives enough partial pressure just about to keep you conscious. I've experienced that kind of lightheadedness before, like when I've been at Everest Base Camp, and that was a uh, you know, similar kind of lightheadedness. This is kind of like, like the symptoms of, uh, of uh, high altitude sickness, but uh, it's a great experience, you know, experiencing these symptoms and learning how to, how to deal with them, how to process them and uh, ultimately how far you can push yourself in these environments is, is absolutely key and that's what we're doing here. One of the things we're interested in is how hard uh, Angelo's muscles are working when he's doing the flying in the windsuit. Okay, so the way that we can record that and measure that is by using what's known as electromyography and that's a measure of muscle activity or the neural drive sent from the brain to the muscles. So we put on these little wireless electrodes and we're getting a sense, so this is data from when he's flying, how active his muscles are and how hard his muscles are working. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is measuring how fatigued his muscles are. Go, 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 as hard as you can, go, 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 and relax, relax. relax slowly. So we've taken some strength measures and some electromyographic measures of his muscles condition before he started doing the flying uh, and then we're going to be doing it again when he's done. So some of the things we might be able to learn from this are, are seeing which muscles are most implicated and, uh, and then we might even be able to suggest some training protocols for him to prepare for his actual flight. You okay? Roger. 
thinking 125 to 140, so let's get at least to 125, which is theoretically where you're at. You should be lifting at a run 120. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go up to, to 110. Yeah, that's correct, 110. And the biometric measurements have shown uh, something really interesting, which is that there was between a 30 and 50 percent decline in strength over one of these jumps in a simulated jump. Push, 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 push. Which, which is quite significant. I mean, that means that you know your, your muscles are potentially losing 50 percent of the, the load bearing capacity. Um, after the jump, so it gives you an idea of how, how hard the body is working under those conditions. This is a really rare opportunity to, to test in, in a tunnel like this. There are almost no tunnels like this in the world that have this kind of capability. I'm very privileged to be given the opportunity to, to test at ACE. These kind of tests are best done in a safe environment, particularly the thermal tests that we're going to do. We're going to be trying to replicate the wind chill that we would get at 45,000 feet traveling at 280 plus miles per hour. And that's significant. So it's always better to do that in a safe environment than to learn actually on the jump. A lot of these people that have tried this jump in the past have ended up with near frostbite conditions on their extremities. So that's something we can we can replicate here in such a, a great facility as Ace Climatic Wind Tunnel. It's going to be colder than negative 40. It's going to be at least minus 52, minus 55 degrees Celsius. So that's the kind of temperature to expect in the in the lower stratosphere. The wind chill that you get as a result of that is is in the region of minus 110 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is our only shot to get data doing this right now. You want to fill up? Warren, we're going to go for at least nine minutes. We're going to try to aim for nine minutes at 120. That's what the record territory is going to be. We're going to go to 125 and keep an eye on the, on the force. We have to work out the bugs in the system. There's still a few more things to resolve, but uh, I think that one day we'll nail it and we can do in-flight characterization of, of wingsuit performance. We have to have windproof layers, we have to have electrically heated batteries to keep us warm, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of high-tech materials going into this. So it's, uh, it's getting toasty, but I guess it's no different to what we would go through if we're you know, waiting on the, on the runway, ready to take off. It was extreme. Being at uh, you know, over minus 110 degrees wind chill, 
it's, it's, it's quite a hostile environment to be in. was my, my fingers, everything else is toasty. If you lose sensation in your fingers and you reach back and go for your main parachute and you can't feel anything, there's a chance that you, you may become unstable, may not be able to open your main parachute and nobody wants to rely on a reserve, especially when you could be unconscious. I think I've been preparing for this for a number of years. The stress will obviously build towards the event. Hopefully the gear will will be exactly the same at altitude as it was here, which is the whole point of, of simulating the environment. It's one less thing to, to stress about, and it gives me confidence to, to move forwards with the project. Uh, that, was, that was like being in such a hostile environment. You could sense that this, you know, this thing, this this wind, just wanted to take your life away. You know, it's uh, it's it chills you to the bones. It's like putting your body into into liquid nitrogen. I think we're pretty much ready to go. 